Good evening, welcome to The Pearl Report, I'm Diana Lin. This is the 10th year of the Shaw Prize, which has been awarded to more than 50 laureates so far in the fields of astronomy, life science and medicine, and mathematical sciences. A very few of them have passed away, but many of the scientists continue their research and discoveries. Tonight, we recall how philanthropists Sir Run Run Shaw and cohorts started the $1 million award and how some of the laureates spent their prize purse. Now, did you point these flowers out to people? Cambridge University professor Michael Berridge made a groundbreaking discovery in 1983 of a universal second messenger in cells for which he won the Shaw Prize for Life Science and Medicine in 2005. You had already retired in 2003. So there's sort of period of adjustment. Do more gardening, spend time with my grandchildren. The couple had moved to this home. I said when we came here, I said, well, You've lost your study. Yeah. So now I'm in the sitting room and he's supposed to be doing his work. It's impossible, really. Receiving the Shaw Prize completely altered my life in many ways, mainly because it's enabled me to go on doing what I love doing. <laughs> For almost 300,000 pounds, roughly half of his one million US dollar prize. And I could acquire this wonderful little place in Cambridge. And it's a real pleasure now to be able to have all my papers laid out. And when I want to go into college to dine, so I've got my coat and trousers and spare shirts and, and of course my Trinity tie to go into college. Sir Michael discovered inositol trisphosphate, or IP3, is a second messenger in cells, producing a calcium signaling pathway. So I'm now very interested in trying to understand how calcium produces memories, and then how, in Alzheimer's disease, these memories are rapidly erased. In Alzheimer's disease, you have your normal calcium starts going up with age. When you go to sleep, the, the calcium's high all the time. There's no memories to consolidate. It's also known a lack of vitamin D protein in brain neurons raises the risk of Alzheimer's. This is when it gets really frustrating when you haven't got a lab. Of course, I dearly love to do some experiments now on neurons to see if I gave them vitamin D, they would in fact lower the calcium. And that would be really exciting. The way I'm doing it is to write papers and then hopefully somebody might say, oh, why can't we test that? When will he really retire? I think I'll recognize when I'm not actually coming up to scratch. 51-year-old Wang Xiaodong, the 2006 Life Science and Medicine Laureate, is far from retirement, having decided three years ago to return home. Well, in the U.S., my research focus will not go beyond my own lab and you know, maybe my uh, close colleagues. Um, but in China, since I'm the director of the institute, um, you know, I pay detailed attention to everybody's research and to literally all the important labs in China. I'm part of a much bigger things now. 13 years ago, Wang had helped establish his National Institute of Biological Sciences in Beijing while in the U.S. researching apoptosis or cell death in the hope of curing cancer. We we'll specifically make cancer cells sensitive now to apoptosis. In recent years, we have been shifted our research focus on to study another form of cell death called necrosis. Previously thought to be caused by physical or chemical injuries. Now we realize a form of necrotic death is also executed by uh, cellular biochemical programs. We have close collaboration with the physicians in the hospital, so we can directly connect the necrotic cell death that we observe in the laboratory to the human disease. Wang says he used part of his one million US dollar Shaw prize to buy a house. 
At that time, my older son was just getting uh, high school. So we uh, bought a house close to his high school. This is the new house Oxford University professor Stephen Barber's just bought after winning this year's astronomy prize for work on accretion disks. We came to Oxford and uh, we pretty much had to take a place that was farther out of town. Carolyn said, well, you know, you're just going to have to get one of these prizes. So we rolled our eyes. Tuesday morning, the email came that uh, I had won the short prize this year. So he really felt good about our dad, because he won a prize. And I felt like, we're all going to be famous in this family. In Oxford, they're terribly expensive. But you're rich. Well, we're a rich family, nobody, and we can win this house. No, I know it. With the Shaw Prize, we'll be able to have less time commuting and more time doing science. So it's furthering the cause of science, absolutely. No question. <laughs> We felt that uh, so Ronan Ying establishing the uh, Shaw Prize helps to emphasize the importance of science. Professor Yang Chen Ning, a Nobel laureate for physics in 1957, was asked by Sir Ronan Shaw in the 1980s why the Nobel is so successful. It was a very large cash award criterion of selection, it was uh, very strict and uh, very rigidly followed. It's long-lasting. In 2002, Sir Run Run Shaw launched his eponymous prize. We can guess he felt that he has contributed a lot to uh, education in China. A preparatory committee was formed with Yang, Lady Shaw and scholars, including Ching Pak Chung. It's a great idea. We have never heard about any prize that originated uh, in Hong Kong to make this an international prize. We are going to uh, recognize and honor a scientist who have made a profound contributions, you know, to, to knowledge discovery or to betterment of human lives. And the prize money? We reference to Nobel Prize, you know, awards. It was decided to be one million US per prize. You know. Professor Yang Chen-ning says the categories of astronomy and math were making tremendous breakthroughs and were chosen immediately. Because uh, they were excluded from the Nobel Prize. Life science and medicine competed with the Nobel's physiology or medicine. It's a large enough field that could tolerate two prizes. Seven Shaw laureates have later also won Nobels. The Nobel Prize, because of its... Uh, Long history is the most uh, prestigious. I think the Shaw Prize now ranks just next to that. Nobel Selection Committee members must be from Sweden, Norway or Denmark. Of 17 Shaw Committee members, only two are Chinese. We believe that this is uh, to our advantage because uh, Northern Europe is a small region. Each year, the Shaw Foundation invites nominations from thousands of scientists through societies and institutions. Only dozens are returned for math and astronomy and hundreds for life science and medicine. The three committees then shortlist them. They will engage in intensive study, informal consultation, and then come down to one team uh, uh, that have uh, contributed to one work. So for example, it should be works that are, are relatively recent or rec whose importance has been recognized relatively recently. In every field of science, every year, there is generally uh, two or three uh, achievements that greatly excite the scientists in that field. So these are natural uh, possibilities. The committees then submit their candidates to the adjudicator's board. In every case, after exchanges, we have accepted their recommendations. I was president here uh, for three years. Uh, three years of the back. Royal Society of and, Edinburgh. Uh, President, uh, President Michael Atier, Abel Prize day winner day. and former master of Cambridge's Trinity uh, College, chaired the Shaw Selection Committee for Mathematics for five years. 
City's committee have quite a difficult task. He was recommended by the late Chen Xingqin, a renowned differential geometer and the first Shaw Math laureate. It's very important that you start with a new prize, you set a high standard at the beginning. Then people try to maintain the standard. And the mathematical community has very high, rigorous standards. And they say, oh, he's not good enough, he's not good enough. You know, so the number of people that they think are good enough is small. The selection committee depended a lot on outside referees as well as its own criteria. The importance of the, of the results of the theory, how difficult the problems were to, to, to solve, or how original they are in terms of producing new ideas. For the 2002 launch, the Shaw Foundation invited 37 companies around the world to compete for the design of the awards medal and diploma. Third place winners Eddie Yu and Hong Lam's crescent-shaped medal was finally chosen. We are awarding people who really take out the, you know, the true value or the, the essence of the uh, human civilization. So the crescents uh, just want to symbolize that kind of digging and exploring. The pair decided on a three-quarter profile of Sir Run Run. Place is uh, a bit more natural and have uh, confidence. When we are setting up okay, the shooting, uh, he sat aside. At one point, he just smiled at us and asked, uh, OK, you're working very hard. Uh, or we said, yes. <laughs> it's, like, it's very humble and kind, right? The foundation sent the design to a coin minting plant in the US. It takes a lot of time uh, to, you know, to modify the mode uh, until uh, it's become really look like uh, Mr. Shaw. After 10 years when I look at this award, I think we did it. Really uh, long lasting and timeless design for this uh, design uh, for uh, Shaw Prizes. I feel it's an um, honor to write this calligraphy, but um, I need to be calm and um, happy to write it. Shaw laureates are also awarded a diploma. Chao Xiao Hing has inscribed almost all the names except one year when she was out of town. It's based on the Roman type. Uh, actually, when I wrote it, I think it's my style calligraphy. <laughs> The foundation gives Chow 20 blank parchments for each laureate. She writes on five to ten pieces, assign a number to each, and place her best work on the top of the pile. Chow tries to highlight special features of each name. For example, um, this is um, for John. The rhythm of the letters will be quite fluid, so it's more easy for me to make it uh, visual pretty. More on the short prize after the break.